Hi guys, um, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and in this short video I'm going to talk to you about 18th century in, uh, drinking glasses. Um, basically, 18th century and Victorian drinking glasses have been one of the best um, sources of income for me over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, it used to be you could go to a car boot sale and you'd see a table full of old drinking glasses and they wouldn't have a clue where they are. Um, for 50 pence you'd buy a big Georgian rummer and you'd be selling out £110, £150. Or if you were very lucky you'd see a glass with a cotton twist in the stem. I'll show you an example of them in a minute. Uh, for 50p and again you're in the hundreds. Um, it doesn't happen so much now. Um, Georgian glass is becoming a lot more scarce, um, but you do find it. Um, so I'm going to show you um, some examples, and I'm going to talk to you now about how you identify them. Now, when you walk up to a table at an antique fair or a car boot sale, and you see they have a lot of glasses on the table in a box on the floor, first thing you're looking for is a colour difference. Georgian glass or Victorian glass has a grey hint or a grey tone to the glass. It's not as white as modern glass. So that's the first indicator is the colour. And um, believe it or not, you will, it will stand out. You'll see this dark grey glass. Um, the second indicator then, once you've seen this grey glass, you want to check see if it's real. So you pick it up and you hold it up to the light. And what you're looking for, you're looking at the bowl and you'll see swirls running around inside the glass. They're called stri striations or styrations. That is basically the lines where the glass has been blown, hand blown by a, a glass maker on a rod. In amongst that you may see a little bit of a uh, little white flecks of flux or little bits of dirt in the glass. N not very often but you will. Um, but the styrations definitely um, and at the top then you may see a little lump where it's been um, cut off. Um, the next thing you're looking for then obviously is the type of foot. Um, most of the 18th century has a sort of pointed, shallow pointed foot called conical foot. Um, what you're looking for on the foot is the pontal mark. Now a pontal mark is basically the mark left behind after the glass blower has finished blowing. Now there's three or four varying types. You have a ground out pontal, um, which is where they snap the rod off and they polish, polish it smooth. You have a, a snapped or sharp pontal, which is basically where they snap the rod off the glass and just leave the lump on the bottom of the glass. Uh, that's what you generally find on the 18th century glass or you have a gadget tool mark which is like an, a letter T underneath the foot um, and you'll see it, it'll be two lines like a letter T and that is more 1860 to 1880 on Victorian glass um, but you're looking for, as I say, the pontal mark to show it is a hand blown piece next then English glass was lead glass, lead crystal so if you held it by the foot and you flick the bowl um, you will have a ringing like you would a bell. Continental glass, still could be 18th century, uh, is more often not soda glass. Uh, this has a dull thud. So that's more just so you can tell the difference between English glass and continental glass. Um, these glasses or the manufacturing processes have been uh, done by Whitefriars and many other companies in the 20s and 30s. So it is, you will, you will get the odd piece that you've bought, you think is Georgian, and it turns out to be a late, late 19th or early 20th century Powell and Son and Whitefriars um, glass goblet or something, reproduction. But it doesn't matter because if you're buying at a car boot sale, you're buying at the right money. And either one is going to be worth money. But the likelihood is, if you're buying it out of a box of drinking glasses on the floor, that it's going to be a Georgian. Now I'm going to show you um, some examples of the feet. I've, I haven't got no Georgian glass left. No sooner than it comes in, I sell it, it flies out the door. So what I've done, I've actually done a little diagram on a piece of paper to show you the, uh, the types of pontal marks, just so you have an idea. 
But as I've said, you're not just looking for pontal mark. It's pontal mark, it's colour, it's durations, sound, um, that's the main indicators anyway, and obviously shape. Um, and now with shape, the only way to learn shapes is to familiarise yourself with them, either by handling Georgian glass, viewing Georgian glass at auctions, or you get yourself some books. I have two of the best books available on the market, in my opinion, on 18th century drinking glasses. Um, so I'm going to do some close-ups of these, and I will give you the ISBN numbers of the books. I recommend if you want to buy Georgian drinking glasses, 18th century glasses, you, um, you buy these books. I can't tell you now how important it is to have a varied arsenal uh, when you go out to these markets. You don't just want to be one track. You don't just want to be buying modern 1970s glass or you don't just want to be buying metal away. You want everything. So no matter when you go to a market, whatever's on that table, you can make money off it. So Jordan Glass, when you find it, you'll find it for a pound or two. And you'll sell it. Some glasses can be up £500. If you've got a heavy bluster or a Newcastle light bluster drinking glass, that's a period of 1720 to 1740s. Um, it can be in the thousands. You can get a couple of thousand pounds for a heavy bluster uh, goblet now, and that's one glass. And I've actually seen and handled some of these heavy bluster pieces over the years. So they, they will come up. Um, if somebody's at the car boot sale and they, sadly their mother or their grandmother's passed away and they're just clearing the house out, you'll be surprised. They will turn up. So if you don't know 18th century glass, I recommend you learn it. Um, buy these books. I strongly recommend this uh, 18th century drinking glass guide. And I'm going to give you some close-ups of the books now as well. But first I'll cover the pontal marks for you so you have a better understanding of the pontals. And then I'm going to do a close-up of the books for you. Okay, so here's the um, diagrams I've done for you myself, right? So basically, that would be the bottom of the foot, or it'd be slightly curved or conical. But what you'll have, you'll have flat, and then you'll have a little indentation where it's been polished out, if you can imagine that, and that's called a polished foot. You tend to find that more from 1780, 1800. You got the gadget tool mark that I talked about. Now this would be the underside view of the foot rather than the side on view. And you'd just have a little T. And that T is the tool mark um, where it pinched onto the bottom of the glass for, to, for blowing. And then of course the all important, this is the one you're looking for, which would be the slightly conical foot and you'd have a large lump of sharp glass underneath the foot that hasn't been cleaned off. That's called the uh, sharp pondle. They are what you're looking for, for the pontal identification. Now I'm going to talk to you about the uh, glass book. I'm going to give you all the information you need so that you can order this book yourself. And, and this does cover absolutely everything from Venetian glass. Sorry, this one doesn't, the other does. Hang on get up through the history. Right, here we go. Here's the foots actually, uh, feet actually, showing you the different type of feet and there is the conical. This one's got a folded rim. Uh, up to about 1740, they would turn the rim back in under itself to stop chipping. Um, that's called a folded foot. So you'd see a, a line inside the actual foot rim itself. Um, in fact, there's an example of a folded foot there, just so you know. But again, this book, as you can see, we're on the uh, baluster period at the moment. These are the glasses I told you about that can be worth thousands. Um, this book covers all the way through, these are light balusters, coming all the way through now, 1750. And then you come into these, the, the twists and the uh, threaded uh, stems. Uh, you can have air twists, cotton twists and so forth. These are very desirable glasses, and as you can see, this book covers all the shapes, all the periods, all the way up. It's everything from sweetmeats, Jacobean glass, and so on. You've got the mixed and coloured stems now, mixed twist rather. Uh, you've got the faceted stem, which is all cut down. 
um, that's 1770s, 1780s. Um, where are we going? Just giving you some examples, just showing you how good this book is. It covers absolutely everything you want. Um, another type of foot I didn't actually talk to you about thinking about it is a lemon squeezer foot. Now, if you think of a lemon squeezer, uh, where you actually juice your lemon on, imagine that being pressed inside a, a glass a foot and the imprint it leaves behind, that's called a lemon squeezer foot. That's from around 1800. Um, I haven't actually come across one of them in the book by a minute. I, I'm certain they have, in fact, there you go. That's what you call a lemon squeezer foot. Um, but, as you can see, amazing book. He even covers, as I say, the decoration, whether a piece is copper wheel engraved, acid etched, stippled, or enameled. It's all in this book. Um, would certainly recommend you buy the book. I'll give you the ISBN now, I'm not going to show you any more of that book. Let me see if we got it. There you go, there's your ISBN. Uh, it's not going to be a cheap book, it's going to be up about 50 to 100 pounds. Um, and the next book I have here is the Jacobites and their drinking glasses. Now the Jacobites have secret uh, messages in their engraving and things like that. So a Jacobian glass can be very, very desirable. Um, the rows and things like that all add special meanings. So that's why they were engraved with their stories and their meanings. So this book here covers the history of Jacob Jacobite glass and everything you need to know. Um, all the different notes. The note, this is basically the shape inside the stem. So not the foot or the bowl, this will be the stem. So you've got like a bladed nope and annulated nope and so on, cushion nopes. Um, different types of bowls, telling you the different bowls from a trumpet, conical, um, just to a bucket bowl. So, as you can see, these books are seriously important. If you want to learn 18th century glass, I can't emphasize enough how important these two books are to me. So as I'm saying, um, books are very important. Um, I have a library of probably a thousand different books. I cover every subject. Over the 10 or 15 years I've been going, um, I've got books on, well, if there's, if there's anything out there, any designer you're, you're, who's pulling the money, I got his book. Um, and I'll do a lot of book reviews and help you where I can. Um, as I say, I hope this um, video helps. Um, and I promise you, if you learn 18th century glass, you won't be wasting your time. It will earn you, over the years, thousands and thousands of pounds. It's not so much how much a glass will sell for, it's the profit margin when it's coming in for a pound and selling for 30. Or coming in for 50p and selling for 100 pound. Learn Georgian drinking glass. Um, if you want to handle them, go to an antique fair. You'll find lots of dealers with them. They'll talk to you, they'll show you how They'll show you all the points I've mentioned, from the colour, the striations, the pondle, they'll cover it all, they'll help you. Um, dealers, they are nice people, you can approach them, they will, if you, if they got a glass for sale and you say to them, well how do you know it's Georgian and that, a lot of the dealers will actually hold it up and they'll say to you, well, look at the striations, look at the pondle and so forth, look at the shape. Um, but yeah, it'll be one of your biggest earners throughout your life. So I recommend you um, learn Georgian glass, and if you uh, you know already know Georgian glass, I hope you've uh, picked something up from this um, short video, even if it's just the ISBNs of the books. I don't think I showed you the uh, ISBN of the Jacobite book, so I'll do that now. That's the Jacobite and the drinking glasses, okay? Um, just so you have it. So. Until the next one, I hope this video has helped and you've enjoyed. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Find us at antiquesarena.co.uk or you'll find us on eBay. Our eBay shop name is Antiques Arena Clearance. Thanks for watching.